really hard is in the middle compared to the bosses in here on how hard they, um, these bosses will hit. So Noth, Ferlina, Mexna, Thaddeus, Hagen, Fugin, Stala, KT, Saf, and Patchwork all are going to do more tank damage than Oru does. So the tank damage is, uh, is real. Our tanks gotta get a super sweet set from here, right? Yes. Yeah, but this is just it's just physical damage on this. So Bograin and Thane are listed as super um, low damage, but that's because they don't do physical damage. Their damage is elemental. Yeah, the set is really good. It's really um, cool. I really like the Dreadnought set. It looks so dope. It looks awesome, and it is. It is. Some of the pieces are crazy good. Um. And this might be a zone where I end up having, or we end up having, uh, Oprimo go back to deep prot. It may just be something that needs to happen for this zone. Dual wield tanking might be gone. Uh, because of how hard these bosses hit. Okay. Just looked up the set bonuses for Dreadnought. That's pretty awesome. Especially yeah, so that the, the the eight piece is weird though because like it's not that won't save you like it's not enough to make it enough to save you help healers out it does by 160 it's but good. with with how hard these bosses hit if a bot if a mo if the tank drops below 20 percent, they're probably dead yeah. okay it's time for kel Tuzad. all but right like the four piece is the reason why we're gonna spread out the damn the tank gear to all the tanks for four horsemen. All right, so the final boss. Um, I'm. I think I mentioned this in in raids uh, last night. Um, so this boss, like the the tricky part is the second half, the second second phase. The problem is the first phase can't be made faster with us getting stronger. It takes about five, maybe a little over five minutes every time, pretty much no matter what we do, unfortunately. Um, so we kind of have to wait that time, but that five minutes is still active. We have to be killing mobs, which is, I mean, it's a long time. So we really want to make all of our, or each of our attempts count on KT and try, try to learn as much as we can each attempt. Um, he does a pretty crazy amount of abilities. And, uh, and learning that, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, Fudd said, yeah, you could bug it out, uh, if you killed the, the ads too fast. Yeah, if you, like, go into their cubbies and kill them, that's right. Yeah, you can, you can bug it. Um, so, we can talk about phase one real quick, but it's actually not too bad. You, you just kind of need to know what mobs you, you attack, uh, depending on what your role is. Let me throw up the guide real quick. All right. Okay, so um uh so tanks in melee are going to are going to be there's going to be unstoppable abominations, basically the big guys. So you you tank and melee them down. Um they they do a uh, a stacking healing debuff or a mortal wound or or something, but um you don't need to tank switch, but basically just make sure that debuff falls off before you go and, and grab another mob for tanks. The ranged DPS are going to be after soul weavers and soldiers. Um, the the soldiers, they only have 2k health, uh, but if someone touches one, just touch. It's like a proximity mine. If someone touches one, um, then it, it explodes on contact and does a bunch of damage to everyone around you. 
So we want range to just nuke them down quickly before they get anywhere near the center. Um, the Soul Weavers only also do damage if someone's in melee range of them. Okay, so that's why we don't have melee go and kill the, the Soul Reavers or the Soldiers. Um, because we won't take any damage if the range kill them. And that's it. We, we just need to keep all our targets down. Apparently this part is really easy. I don't even know how much we need to like to worry about it. Um, we, I mean, the one thing I would say is we want to make sure we don't use all our resources, cooldowns. Like we don't, we, we shouldn't need to touch any of that. Um, we should be able to start phase two with full everything, hopefully. Um, okay. So Kel'Thuzad just does a bunch of stuff and depending on where you are, what you do, like you or what your role is, you have to react to things slightly differently. So everyone kind of needs to know every ability. This is one of those fights. Um, uh, so the first thing he does is he'll just, uh, he'll do frost bolts a lot. Um, and it's a ton of damage, uh, but it can be kicked. The problem is that um, the interval that he casts it in can't be predicted very well. And so what we need like probably probably like three I, I don't know what the exact number is going to be but a good amount of interrupters i think i think what we'll do is we'll have two people in each group and have three groups so six total people interrupting okay oh in each group that we're going to stand yeah which we will get to that part in a second um for melee uh okay so yeah don't let a single one get through yeah because it that that kills people all right Besides the Frost Bolt, he also has a Frost Bolt Volley um, that he does every 15 seconds, so this is predictable. Uh, it hits the entire raid, and it also does around 3k damage. Um, this is something we just deal with and heal through. Uh, greater Frost Resistance Potions are, are, are good here. You could also maybe think about using them just reactively here, like if you're low on health from something else and you might die from it, then you could throw this to shield yourself. All right. Uh, next, this is this is the big thing we need to under understand. This is a the pretty tricky ability, the chains of Kel'Thuzan, aka crazy as hell mind control. Five people are gonna get mind controlled, and Kel'Thuzad wipes threat on everyone. Okay, so uh, we will be able to we'll have timers on this, so we'll we'll be able to predict when it's about to happen. So because the threat wipe, all DPS are gonna are gonna stop a few seconds before. Um, and, uh, uh, everyone else is going to be ready to start CCing and locking down whoever gets mind controlled. Uh, but yeah, we need to immediately lock them down because the people that get mind controlled also get buffed a pretty good amount. Um, I mean, we can see how awful that is on Scarum. Well, we're going to have five of those. So we really, really have to make sure we, we keep everything locked down. Um, uh, the tank Oh yeah. Also, by the way, the tank will always be one of the mind controlled targets. So we we have to have other tanks ready to go, um, uh, to to be switched out whenever that happens. Um, it it should be easy for a new tank to pick him up though because there's a threat wipe. So just be the first person in. DPS need to hold their DPS until probably a few seconds after the new tank comes on, and then you can continue. Um, this the the tank being mind controlled is also uh like that also tells us we we know who one of the targets of mind control will be every time so we can we can like lock him down like super like maybe a melee can just like get like a big stun or 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 something like like they'll because they'll know like right when it happens um then the other four are gonna be random right so okay uh and then he also does this uh this mana de detonation He'll target some someone who uses uh, mana and cast it on them. And it's like a bomb. After four seconds, you explode. Um, and it's a ten yard radius, but it but it also burns half of your mana pool, which I know sounds crazy, but we got a tip from Sofs. All right, so so he suggests that don't use pots on this fight just to keep your mana full or topped up or or in general. Or else you just waste more when it hits you. Because it burns half of your current mana pool. Not your max mana pool. Right? So if you keep your mana full, then more is going to get burned. But if you keep it low, 
wait to get burned and then use a pot then it's going to be way more efficient so uh that is a great tip and something that we should all do next we have shadow fisher here's the picture of it you can see on my screen these things are just going to appear on the floor he'll pick a random member if you stand in it after a few seconds i think it's three se yeah if you stand in it after three seconds you just die it's crazy um melee are going to see this a lot more because they're going to be stacked in piles so someone else in their pile might get target targeted with it everyone needs to move out of it um this could technically kill like several melee at once if if uh we don't handle this correctly but this ability is also like completely avoidable right no one should really ever die from this um but it is uh i rem i remember this ability when i was playing i was playing a uh the blood death knight dps actually in um in lich king and i i remember these things being sneaky right you only have three seconds and like i know it sounds like a lot but like sometimes your mind goes somewhere else for just a couple of seconds like they can sneak up sneak up on you so you really have to like put effort into focusing on your feet the whole fight and making sure that like they're not going to be there um okay we also yeah i know there's a lot of abilities we also have a frost blast that uh, targets a random person freezes them for five seconds but the big part is that it does 130 percent of their damage over that five seconds so i think on the fourth second they will have taken 100 percent damage and die so they have to be healed before that fourth second um at least one heal that that's like 30 percent of their health pool uh in order to, to survive this so healers just really need to be on the ball to see whenever a frost blast happens that like they just need a couple heals dropped on them i'm i'm actually not too worried about this ability um like healing it up i i uh it does it it has a chain on it to other people um similar to i beams that's, and that's the problem is it'll jump it'll right increase so Piles. so so the actual healing of it like i don't think is an issue I, I think when it happens like people will survive but this basically makes the fight sort of like cthune right like everyone has to be spread out and everyone has to have a spot that they go to for melee it's it's slightly different but take a look at this map now there's a lot of stuff on here but we'll we'll go we'll just go one by one all right so Let's start with arranged. We see the groups one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ex same as Cthulhu, right? We just split it up into eights. Um, octants, right? You got your quadrants and then your oct. Yeah, eight octants, and uh, then and then everyone within that group will spread out, right? Yeah, and everyone just kind of finds a spot. We 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 have experience in this. We should be able to do this pretty easily. Okay, the melee instead of going two at a time are gonna stack up. I think five or six at a time. It, it, it depends on how much melee we have. And we'll put them in groups that we call A, B, and C. And with the tank, the four of them uh, are to form a triangle around Kel'Thuzad right in the middle of the room. Um, then these these orange dots are three tanks that stand, uh, stand way far away that are there to step in for when the mind control happens. Why are there three of them? because mine i think it's because mind control can hit anyone and you just want to make sure that like there's someone not mind control to pick up the boss otherwise he'll just kelthuzad hits really hard and will just like murder people very quickly so that uh so we yeah could also in theory have the mail the tanks in one of the each of the melee piles yeah because you can't have multiple melee piles frozen at the same time yeah right yeah i don't i don't know if they need to stand out uh, that that they, might be the a waste that they're there the know. reason that they're there is actually for phase three because oh for the three, for the, the, the scarabs, ads come, right? they need to be there they need to be up there okay well so um yeah we'll talk about the phase three in just one sec uh so we have all this stuff happening right so everyone needs to know okay when you when you get the mana detonation, right? You need to, uh, um, now because of positioning, like some stuff like this should be pretty easy. Like you might not even have to do anything, right? You're, you well, should, or, or what? Rockmu, Rockmu is the one that has to be con Ah, a melee that uses con mana, correct. Yes. Melees that use mana really need to know about mana detonation. Um, the mind control is a really big deal because we're basically just going to slowly murder ourselves if, if we don't lock them down within a couple seconds um 
the frost volley everyone uh yeah we we just heal through and then the frost bolt we need to be on on top of so there's a lot going on and we bring him down to um 40 percent health through all this we get to 40 percent health then phase three starts phase three is actually just an addition of things nothing goes away um when phase three starts five giant guardians of ice crown they they all look kind of like uh an uber con like the big old scarab bug guys five of them will spawn um and attack the raid that's from where you see these arrows here they come they come out of these like uh like gateways like he summons gateways to uh to north rend um like in desperation and then the guardians come out uh, of like of these of those gateways i point that out because the the location that they come out of is important because we have to deal with these guys um these these guardians have a really interesting mechanic every time they switch targets the guardian gets a stacking permanent buff that makes them do 15 percent more damage every time they switch they they switch to a new target so if they kill someone and then switch to a new target or someone pulls aggro anything anytime they switch targets they start doing more more damage this will also happen if anyone in the raid dies though like all of them will just get another stack of the buff um they also have like a bajillion health we we don't we don't kill these we just have to we have to tank mez them and we have to lock them down as much as we can they're undead so we can shackle them but there's a catch if you shackle more than three of these guys kelthuzad will see what we're, up, what we're up to and he just breaks all of them immediately and then we're probably screwed so we have assignments for this we're assigning three priests to three specific guardians so that they can get them right as they spawn all right um the other two will off tank Okay, so uh, they do take taunt, but remember, when you taunt them, that means they're switching targets and, and they'll, they'll get that buff. They can get a few of those buffs, but once they're at like 100%, it's, it's going to be real rough. Um, and, then, and then people die, so they get more buff, buffs, and it's, it's a huge mess. So we really want to keep everyone alive when those mobs spawn. So that's, yeah, we have our off tanks there. Um, is that what you meant, Agbar? Like, like they, the, the north ones would take the two north mobs? The north yeah, off tanks, and, and then you can then you just take them right where they are. Right. So these guys, yeah. So these guys can be here, yeah, uh, and grab these two, and then. Well, this only has four arrows, or am I blind? There should be a fifth one somewhere, but the the other three can be a uh, will be assigned to priests and like specific locations. Um, yeah. So they take taunt. So yeah. So yeah. So I put yeah. The tank should just immediately taunt your mob. Never let it go. Like if they randomly aggro someone else first, that's fine. If they, again, if they get one or two stacks, that's that's it. It happens. It's fine. But once you have your mob, yeah, you, you yeah, do whatever you can to make sure it sticks to you. Um. So yeah, and but as all that stuff is happening, like once the mobs are locked down, we just have to resume to everything like normal. We stand in our same spots. That also means that uh, priests might have to move a little bit into these groups. They might uh. People might be running through the raid in order to lock, to lock stuff down. If you're a DPS or healer standing here, look around for the people that have to move in phase three and, and just get out of the way if they're coming through you because we never know when uh, uh, when he's going to cast another Frost Blast and get, have it get chained. and Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that that's pretty much it. I mean, even explaining it is a lot, but really, I think a lot of this is is gonna come down to just experience with the raid. Once everyone it's, has has their spots, go ahead, Agwar. It's really no more complicated than Cthulhu is. It yeah, seems like right? it is, but it's really not. Yeah, it's yeah, it, yeah. I mean, Cthulhu, I w when looked at this way too, seemed really complicated. But then when we saw, oh, we have timers for these tentacles, we can like predict when this beam is gonna come, right? Like, like we're we're gonna have timers on some of this stuff. Other stuff we're, we're going to be watched for as, as long as really everyone just needs to make sure like they're doing their specific role, right? Like there's a, there's like the same thing with the same thing with four, four horsemen. There's a lot going on. So it's easy to get distracted or be in the wrong spot. But as long as everyone focuses, does their interrupts, keeps everyone healed. Um, well, we can eventually whittle him down. He has a lot of health, right? 
decent amount. Does he have like I I want to? Why do I think three million? Oh, that was Saffron. How much does KT have? Three, three point one million. Yeah, this is a hard fight. <laughs> there, there's, whew. Yeah. Um. This is a fight that that might take some take some time just because our our attempts are kind of limited by those five minute chunks of of having to deal with phase one each time um but he does I, not stop uh shaped he yeah yeah, yeah, well, yeah no, my to mind control during phase three mind control still happens correct yeah it's it's madness yeah so uh Okay. Right. So, yeah. Go ahead, Amber. I think what we'll probably do is for phase three, if the ads don't hit super hard, just have a DPS warrior throw on a shield and go over to it, uh, so that we can keep the MC tanks the same. Okay. But if they do hit hard, then we'll just switch that, and we'll have DPS warriors throw on a shield for phase three, and if they get threat, just turn him. Okay. Okay, that works. Um. I don't know if we have to spread out in this version of KT. I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember, I... The, I don't remember this fight on, K on 25 minutes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just go run into it. Let's do it. See what it does. A bear, a trogan, uh, and a monkey. <laughs> yeah, we're ready for the final boss. <laughs> Look at these people. All right. So when the fight starts, right, we all want to stay in the middle. Um, Immediately see, we'll, we'll see a bunch of mobs. One thing that we need to be very, very, very careful of here is hunters do not multi-shot these mobs. Oh, yeah. You right. will hit the mobs in the room behind them, and they will all come at once then. So these are the soldiers. These are the small guys that should die really quickly, but also explode on contact. These are the big boys that, that should be tanked and spanked. And then we'll also see some, like, ghost-like people soon. Spirits or something. That should also be killed at range. And then we do this for five minutes. And that's it. Yeah, this is a very long fight. I don't really have ranged abilities either. So. I don't either. Oh, actually, I'm a druid. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, have a, I have a couple. I just have to not be a bear. Oh, I've moonfire my one. Good job. There we go. Need. That's all I need. We're good now. All right, so there's a there's soul, soul weaver. weaver, right? Uh, she I, just needs to die they're, before they're she slow. gets slow. Yeah, yeah, notice that they slow, but if you get in melee range, they'll yeah they'll beat ass. So, just so kill him. a soldier, yeah. if he hits me, uh, yeah, he explodes. Oh yeah, can look for that amount of damage. Uh, didn't actually do any damage to me, but it's like five thousand to everybody. Okay. Which won't necessarily kill everybody, but it'll do a lot. Yeah. Yeah, man. I can. I can. Yeah, I. It, this really is going to be all about, like, getting past the five minutes and then just being able to wake up, right? <laughs> like, yeah. People I think. Being awake after five minutes. I, I, I think this is prime time for, like, people to start talking about other stuff. And again, all that is fine or whatever, but, like, people need to be okay with, like, I'm probably just going to be like, hey, like, we need to, we need to focus now, like, whenever phase two starts, because it, it goes from really easy to really complicated real quick. Do the A-bombs cleave or stun? Ye I think you face him away, yeah. I don't think you want to stand... Don't hit this one. I mean, they can, they can be stunned. I remember that. Like that. Mm-hmm. He's not cleaving. He's so we, just stacking mortal wound. We can look at this this room. I mean, this room will be even easier to break up into into octans than uh, Cthulhu's was. So, I, I, yeah, actually, they're not cleaving. They're not. Maybe stunning. it's maybe this room's slightly smaller. I don't know. We'll, we'll just 
We'll have range meters. We want to make sure everyone's 10 yards. All right, he talked There's again. A lot of mobs are coming at. Oh, right yeah. Now. So then the rest come. This is the end. Yeah. So it, it's actually, I think, half the time in in 25 man. So I think we do that twice on a classic attempt. All right, so there's Kelpie Sod. Let's, let's see what he casts. So there's a Frost Bolt that needs to be interrupted every time um, that that can't really be predicted, and he can cast them pretty quick. There's the Void Zones. Wait, that's the Void Zone? It's blue. Okay. In this version, it's blue. Okay, so they, they change yeah. the colors. They're interesting. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be red when they happen. You see them happen there. I'm not sure what else. What other abilities does this version have? Frost Bolts. There's the Frostbolt Volley. That is the Volley, so the Volley still happens. Let's see if I'm... Wait. What just happened? Fud got mind controlled. Oh. In one okay. Shot. So there, there's the Frost Blast. Oh, Which it's... Almost a... Oh, no. You. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, because it does do, do a large percent of your life. All right. Um... Oh, no, that was mana detonation that killed me. That wasn't mind control. Oh, because it detonated so much mana. mana. Oh, no. It hit me for 20,000. What if he cast it on me? <laughs> all right, all right, do some damage. It Just didn't, it didn't get him down to 40. It only hurt me. Get him down to 40. There, I have mana detonation, so I will kill somebody if I... Uh-oh, all right, I'm going to turn into a bear. Maybe I won't detonate. All right, so we hit the point. Okay, so the see the point. portals right there? The portals are created, and then these big old... Oh, I remember them being... Oh, no, they get bigger with each stack they get. Oh, don't die. They get bigger. I, I got frost thinged. So, and they have a ton of health, right? They get bigger with each stack. So, uh, yeah, this is what they look like. If they get really big, it's because we screwed up. And that's it. All right, let's kill this before he kills us. gonna die i did die twice fud murdered me and then the boss murdered me why do you guys have so much health there we go oh we did it but we didn't get the immortal because i died twice oh <laughs> uh where's my res oh yeah yeah druids have a normal res in this version and that's something all right oh i got a gun Oh, I got Journey's End. A gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fudd, you should give me that helmet. So, yeah, this guy this guy dropped some crazy stuff in Classic. Pretty stuff, cool looking gun. A lot of stuff that we'll be using throughout uh, even... Or not throughout, but in certain parts of Burning oh, Crusade. Oh, God, this helmet looks ridiculous. Let's check it out. Why? Why does it look so dumb? <laughs> oh yeah, looking good. I look, I look like a Power Ranger. Right, right with that that, <laughs> that goatee and everything. Oh man, Jeez. that looks good. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was saying this before, but it's it's really gonna come down to just everyone knowing what to react to. Um, how to stay spread out like i i feel like this fight will probably take like agar saying maybe a similar amount of Cthune to learn but maybe feel like it takes longer because of that five minute first phase each time that's something that we'll have to we have to remind ourselves that that might be uh like i don't know i know it sounds silly but it might be pretty fatiguing like to have to deal with that so that that's something we'll want to make sure that we're uh thinking about and yeah, good practice for yeah. Oh yeah, right for BC, right when we have to do the freaking 12, 20 minute eight phase fight every time. Great. Okay, we did it, you guys. We we have crammed every single thing in next into our brains, and we're free. We're free for tomorrow now to do some of the uh, pre-patch stuff as well. Um, a ton of you guys came in to watch and, uh, and comment. Um, and this... Uh, also, this whole thing wouldn't be nearly as good if Agbar wasn't here too. So 
I really appreciate Agbar coming and helping with all these. Um, these were these were really fun to make. I'm gonna chop them all up and uh, I I mean I'm exhausted now, but like going through them and figuring out the abilities and messing around was was a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully we can do this again for more bosses in the future. Have have fun cram sessions where the raid just kind of gets together and we we all talk about it beforehand. Okay. Uh. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for being here. How do you guys feel? You feel ready for next? I don't know. So. It's a lot. It is a lot. Every boss has a lot of abilities. Um I'm a and learner. That's why that's why we put uh that's why we put the short write-ups because really like we might not need to like I mean, when we fight Noth or like Gothic, it's like it's going to be whatever, right? But it would, you don't probably need to know all of the abilities of all the mobs, right? And but topic because right. they're gonna die instantly. Yeah, exactly. So that's why we just do the small write-ups. But um, uh, people always just have like crazy question, random questions about mobs that I just don't know. So I always just try to just go through it all, right? Uh, oh, okay. um. Right, we're still talking about more strats. Cool. All right. I'm excited to get in there tomorrow. Um, we don't have to raid tonight. Miss Chill. And uh, we'll see how the first night goes. Yeah, but thank you guys for taking the time and trying to explain it and help us out. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And again, thanks to Agbar for being, being here. And, and I'll probably do my version of... Uh boss strats for like as we get to the bosses every time oh yeah my ver my version is about three seconds long of hey don't stand in this yeah this yeah exactly the, the, this is where we yeah like like the um yeah even from blackwing lair we we wanted the the assumption going into new raids like to be when we get to a new boss that we're not explaining the whole thing right that we're going into it um with with the assumption that everyone has read the guides that we posted and like and is ready to go so instead of saying okay this guy does this like agbar says we can say okay this group is assigned to here and they already know what they need to do um that's the that's the goal so we'll we'll see uh i and again depending on how nax goes how fast stuff or how slow stuff dies will um kind of help us figure out what mindset we want for the rest of Nax. I mean, it, it could take like several, several weeks to get to the end, or it could take less. I, I don't really know. But uh, I mean, either way, as long as we're still, you know, making it a, a little bit further each night we play, I think Nax is going to be awesome and a lot more fun to clear than, than the last couple of months of AQ40 were. Yeah, Nax right, is a lot more of a fun zone than aq is like yeah there's so many bosses that it breaks up the monotony of trash like it doesn't feel like a super long zone because it's there's so many bosses yeah like you're... 15 bosses yeah the the if, if we combine aq and blackwing layer that's 16 bosses so it's like both of them combined pretty much it's crazy um and the encounters are actually like fun. Yeah. They're not like right. Fancris of where you yeah. just stand there. Yeah, no more no more uh no more what do we call it? Dirty starfish stacking. Yeah. Except <laughs> you do that on Mexna. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> Don't worry, my friends. There will be more starfish stacking. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping my stream now. I'm gonna um uh, I'm going to cut it up into pieces and then post all the links. I might put them on YouTube eventually just because these were super cool. Are you okay if I put these on my YouTube bag, bar? No, I would hate you. No, <laughs> I just, I think they're, they're really fun content. Like it was, it was yeah. cool. Like, like people could put these on in the background and just and listen to us kind of, yeah, just like theorize and talk about these bosses. Um, okay, cool. Alrighty. I'm stopping the stream now. Thank you guys for being here. People that took the time out of their day or, or just put me on their second monitor as they did stuff, uh, I really appreciate it. Or if you're watching the recording, to to be prepared for Nax, extra prepared, I really appreciate that too. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Woohoo! I'm going to go eat some lunch. All right.
Yeah, th thank you, Agbar. Yeah, enjoy your lunch, man.